It was only a few weeks ago that I spoke to Bentley Dean about his documentary Facing Monsters, and he's back with another film that is now available on uh, Stan, a film called Amongst Us, Neo-Nazis in Australia. And again, it's my great pleasure to be speaking to Bentley Dean. Welcome again to Movie Metropolis. Look, uh, thanks for having me back so quickly. You know, makes me makes me look as if I'm a pro prolific filmmaker, doesn't it? But um, the truth is that bo both have been many, a lot of time in the making. Okay, well, let's talk about this uh, neo-Nazi documentary because I gather it all began as a 60 Minutes report. That's correct, yeah, like an incredible one, actually. It, it um, just a couple of months ago won uh, a Walkley Award for um, best, I think it was like long form, I'm not sure actually, but anyway, a Walkley Award. Yet another one to, um, you know, add to the many that Nick McKenzie, the investigative journalist who, who, who led the story uh, to his, um, I don't know, he must have an enormous room full of trophies by now. <laughs> so tell me about the journey that you have been involved with in turning this uh, 60 Minutes report into a feature length documentary. Yeah, look, it, it actually was a, a call um, uh, from Amanda Duffy, um, who heads up, you know, this new exciting strand that they're starting up on stand called Revealed. And this was to be the very first um, uh, documentary uh, in what hopefully will be like a, a long list of investigative documentaries that will appear on Stan. Now, Stan is part of the whole sort of like mega organization that is nine now. So it includes Fairfax and obviously Channel Nine and, and now Stan. And, and I think, you know, I mean, Amanda could probably speak more to this, but I think the exciting idea that they've got there is that there's all this like, you know, talent, um, resources all under one roof and like, you know, why not actually try and reach, reach more people, um, across different platforms. Um, but you know, you utilizing the same sort of talent. And so, um, the th I guess the thinking was that the, the people who watch 60 minutes might not be the same people who watch like a, um, uh, a long form documentary on Stan and, um, and there was certainly enough material there. So, but of course, you know, from my point of view, from a filmmaker's point of view, you're like, you know, I, I saw a rough cut of like uh, the first episode way, way before it went to air. And I'm like, this is really good. <laughs> you know, why, you know, why, why, why make a documentary? Cause it's, it, it does stand up, you know, it's a great piece of journalism, great piece of television. Um, and over the next few weeks, I was, I was slowly convinced, you know, that, that there, there was actually more of a film to this. And that came about by, you know, talking with Nick, uh, himself. And, um, I thought that there was a possibility of going for a, you know, a deeper dive, um, exploring, uh, I guess the material in a different way that did exist. Like there was this vast treasure trove of undercover footage that the undercover person who had infiltrated uh, this cell had collected. And there's some great moments, you know, in the in the 60 minute story, but I felt like, you know, it was hours, weeks, months, you know, of this stuff. And there was just lots and lots of gold. And it's, and, and it, I think it was that, that was one of the main things that convinced me. It was just like, there's this real treasure trove of, of material. And it's, you know, it just hasn't, to my knowledge, been done before either, like where you actually inside you, you you've got this access inside a neo-nazi cell and it was there was some, some surprising stuff in there too so it wasn't just like this like you know um you know obnoxious horrible um uh you know material that you'd expect you know to hear it was actually there's some real tender moments in there like there was a lot of young people um uh, i think it really offered actually a real insight into the way in which brains are washed particularly young people's brains are washed how they how they're targeted and and um brought in uh to this you know horrible horrible organization with with potentially really disastrous outcomes for both both them and and society um in general uh, so that was one thing yeah and that's what i found so incredible about uh, the expanded documentary now that you've put you've put this together is uh, the whole neo-Nazi movement. I mean, we know in Europe, there's been a neo-Nazi movement going in various countries. I know that there's uh, uh, 
uh, sort of a rival Ku Klux Klan sort of um, uh, uh, organizations and, and neo-Nazis in America. But um, in Australia, uh, I, I had no idea that there was really such an organized group of entitled white men who seemed to think that uh, life has passed them by and that everyone else, including Jews and, uh, and everyone who's uh, come to Australia and so on, is to blame for their predicament. So I, I found it incredible you, you putting this together and uh, finding this extra investigative material, undercover material, which is just mind boggling. Yeah, look, I, I had the same reaction. I think that was another motivation because I, I think I'm like you and I think many Australians um, go like, ah, oh, look, it's just a small thing. It's a fringe thing. It'll never catch on, you know. Um, and I guess what was revealed through, you know, Nick and the team's, you know, investigation, particularly undercover, um, was that it is widespread and growing, um, you know, not just here, you know, uh, but all, all around the world. Um, and, you know, not to be dismissed at all, like, you know, as, as part of the, the, the research that you need to do in a story like this, of course, you, you, you do go back to, you know, uh, pre-World War II Germany. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's fascinating reading those, like those early thirties accounts of like, you know, the, 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 the political, you know, setting, like the, the, the germs of like, you know, Nazism, um, you know, they, they were just like Hitler was considered, you know, they got, you know, the, his party got 1% of the vote and, you know, and even before that, you know, they were just considered, considered cranks and just fringe elements and, you know, all the same sort of things, <laughs> things that I'm thinking about, you know, uh, Nazis today, um, and a lot of people do. And I think that, you know, unless you take it seriously, that these, the, the, these, these hardcore people embedded with, uh, combined with like, you know, certain preconditions like, you know, uh, social upheaval, you know, unemployment, uh, et cetera, can, as we know, what happened back then, uh, lead into something that, you know, utterly disastrous, utterly disastrous. And you have to be vigilant. And so that was the big revelation for me. Like I, I, I didn't choose, you know, and I probably wouldn't have chosen to do a story like this, but I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to, to do so. And, um, uh, it just made me think that, you know, democracies don't come easy. You know, you do actually have to call things out when you see them. And that's, what's great about this, this, this film and, and, and the, the, the big, the big idea, which is actually to, you know, by infiltrating them, you're, you're bringing them to light, you know, they can't hide in the shadows, you know, this is what, um, Nazism looks like. This is yeah. the face of it. Exactly, exactly. So it's great mm. that uh, it's all been revealed. So uh, the the undercover agent, so to speak, mm. Uh, mm. who was doing filming, I gather, with his mobile phone, um, it was very risky. I, I could imagine watching a lot of this footage uh, and so on that he was taking his life into his own hands. Yeah, no, it wasn't wasn't his mobile phone. He had you know, sort of state, sort of state of the art, sort of secret cameras, you know, uh, on his, on his body that couldn't be seen. Yeah. But he, he, he's, and he was like, you know, the, it wouldn't have been possible for him to get what he did if he was just like, you know, uh, waving around a mobile phone, no way. Um, so yes, definitely, you know, hats off to bravery for this guy. Like, he uh, did an incredible job. Um, I mean, I, 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 you know, in watching it, you're putting yourself in, in his shoes because you literally are in his shoes. You've got that point of view of where he is, the conversations that he engages with. And, and, and I would be, you know, extremely nervous, you know, uh, being who he is. And in fact, um, we do know that, 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 that people um, who have been undercover or suspected of being undercover in these organisations have actually been killed uh, in the past in Australia. So, you know, it's not a light undertaking. But um, I did meet the undercover uh, guy and he is, you know, very, an extraordinary individual, actually. Um, and you, you kind of get a sense of like how, how, how it was that he was able to do it because he, he, he is pretty amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well you could hear the way he was... Uh, um, 
dialoguing with uh, with the various people that he was, uh, he, you know, he, he he did it all. You know, he yes, he's part of the group. He's uh, he's very much in, into uh, uh, white supremacy and all of that sort of thing. So uh, yes, that 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 worked really well. Yeah, and that, that I think that was the other point of difference. I think with uh, in, in do, doing the documentary is to explore his you know character um, a lot more and his 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 personal journey through throughout this. Um, uh, uh, I found like you know incredibly you know interesting. I mean, then there are twists and turns for him. Like you know, he even you know says himself he, he felt he, he he felt like even as the undercover guy that he was getting sucked into the ideology i mean that's how powerful it's such a it's a it's a very powerful thing to say i think that you know you're you're going in there you know with a clear mission in mind and you're starting to be seduced you know by these ideas yourself i guess you're so you're so you know absorbed into it i mean clearly he wasn't you know in the end but but i think it it, it says a lot of um you know how powerful these movements can be, you know, in terms of brainwashing. So if you're a young, vulnerable kid, you've almost got no hope, you know, like, uh, uh, and, and you know, we, the, the film did include, that's the other thing that this film does include, it does include someone who has escaped, so to speak, like come out of it and is able to reflect on how he was, how he was uh, sucked in and, and also how he got out, um, and um, his his thing is, uh, look, just don't underestimate these people. That it's it is a sophisticated operation. Mm. Oh, it's very much like a cult, and, and I mean we've seen mm. so many examples of cults that have brainwashed people and uh, uh, and have been convinced, utterly convinced about uh, all sorts of views and opinions, and that which they mm. think are totally true and real. I mean, uh, you can extend this to anti-vaxxers and into anti-lockdown protests. I mean, the whole thing mm. sort of has a connection. I suppose with all sorts of uh, antisocial behaviour. Yeah, like, and that I think hopefully the the thing that you know it, it, that that comes across is um, is like I I don't think I don't think you can be dismissive. You know, it'd be a total mistake to be dismissive of the very real uh, concerns. You know that, that that people have. You know, and they do include things like you know, um, security, you know, in terms of employment and housing. And, you know, if you, if you actually like listen to the seduction part of, of how they get people in, I find myself going like, yeah, right on. Like, it's like the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer. Like, you know, the, you know, it's not true representative democracy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But kind of agreeing with all of those sort of things. And, and you, 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 so I, I think a, a lot of a lot of the grievances are actually um, utterly understandable. It's just that leap. Oh, and so the solution is to kill all the Jews, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, and, and of course, they don't do that as part of like the this this seduction technique. They don't go leap to the, that that conclusion. It's a very gradual process you know that, that, that you get there but um but yeah i i think i think it would be a total mistake to to dismiss you know people like dismiss the anti-vaxxers dismiss the freedom people you know because i i do actually think that those that those grievances are real but you've got to engage with them and you've got to address with them in in, in a way you could you could view it as like a as like a cry for help you know from a society that's in in danger of you know going the wrong way it's just like you've got an element of people going like listen to us listen to us we're hurting we're hurting we're hurting you know and if you don't go like okay well maybe we do actually have to restructure ourselves maybe we do have to like even out you know incomes etc otherwise you know some bad stuff is going to happen there's it's like the people are going to be attracted to these movements because they're they, they appear to be offering something offering a solution they're not you know they're offering the absolute opposite mm. but if you ignore it you know you're you're in peril no uh -huh. fair comment yeah no i, I mm. understand uh, i mean who knew that gary word or the grampians was uh, was a, a hive uh, of activity there in terms of the training plus of course suburban uh, melbourne i mm. gather um and so i'm interested in mm. the extra footage that you would have added apart from the extra undercover footage um 
as well as the uh, the scenes of the, the uh, Nazi era, uh, etc. in the in the thirties. I'm I'm intrigued in how you put it all together uh, in terms of turning this into a seventy five minute doco. Oh, okay. Well, there's there's probably a one word answer to that, and it's it's called Tanya Nimi, who's the, my fabulous editor, who I've you know we've worked together on all of our films, and and she's an absolute you know genius artist. Um, Look, we have a like an you know a great relationship, and, and we, we, we I think we inspire each other quite a lot. And, and in fact, I I um I'd said for this particular story that 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 you know she 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 should take the co-directors you know credit on this. So instrumental she was in in actually putting it together the story. Um, of course, you know she's very modest and said no way. Um, <laughs> but I just want it on the record. <laughs> she's. Uh, she is amazing. So look, yeah, we kind of went back. We went back to, we just kind of like, okay, let's, let's forget the 60 minute story. Let's, 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 you know, find what, what is, what we think is the heart of this story. And it's, there's a, there's a couple of things. Um, look, it was, it was clear that, that those two, 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 in a way it's kind of straight. So like the Gary word that you, 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 you talk of, and this is, again, it's very different to the 60 minute story. We, it's, it's almost like chronological, like where the story sort of like, you know, surfaces for Nick and Nick Mackenzie is, is the person we're kind of following through all of this. It's, it becomes his journey as well. And there's a, there's a, there's a big twist, you know, in, in, uh, in his journey in it, where it does become very, very personal, you know, for him, but how the story came to light for, for all of us was, was that, you know, Australia day, um stunt i guess where you know you had people you know they they, they put out the footage themselves these nazis like you know they, they felt brave enough to do so like nazi salutes and heil hitlers in the caves of of um you know one of the most important culturally spiritually um uh uh sites in 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 all of australia for you know the first australians and there's like i've got no sense of irony these people like you know <laughs> they're sort of like saying white supremacy and we should get rid of all these you know newcomers etc failing to realize that the very cave that they're in has been inhabited but by people for tens of thousands of years <laughs> you know um uh, so, uh, I felt like an important place to start, like just to symbolically just get that this is, this is the context. This is where we are. This is the, this is real, this place. And, and it also, we, we revisit it at the end, you know, it's, it's a, it's also a place of reflection that, that, that Nick returns to and, and, um, I guess goes back to the beginning in a way to try and make sense of, of what he's learned, you know, throughout this journey and, and and the blows that he's he's suffered as well um so there there is that um the extra footage i i did start as soon as you know almost immediately start filming nick on the on the case like so you know him doing the reporting the the nuts and bolts of what it is to be an investigative journalist like which is a lot of time on the phone on the computer sort of like on the road just trying to like tease out the strands of a story and, 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 and try and make it happen. I, I'm personally really fascinated by that. Like I, 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 I love, I love to, I, I love being there. I love seeing him in action. Like he is a machine. He is a, you know, he's a national treasure um, and absolutely essential to a, a properly functioning doc democracy. Um, but it's hard work. And so that was part of the challenge is to, you know, capture that in an interesting way. And I think he's such an engaging person that that wasn't, wasn't too difficult. Um, so that was a lot of the extra footage. Um, you know, it was supplemented, um, uh, by a bit of extra sort of like drone footage and, but, but really, you know, it, that was, that was the core of the, the extra material was just following Nick. Okay. Really good. Mm. What, what's the situation with Nick now? And, and also with this, neo-nazi group is there any sort of development with uh, any of that I th look you know I'd, I'd have to check actually um but the last that i'd heard was um uh, still awaiting trial the the, the two leaders of uh, the national socialist network um still hadn't gone to trial um because uh as happens in the in the film is um they they do get they do get arrested um 
uh, look, from what I've, from what Nick has told me, um, like they are in a bit of disarray and, you know, imagine like it's not so easy to get recruits these days, but, but I, I, I don't think that you should, you should rest, you know, on that. You know, they will find other ways to operate, change name, you know, be a bit more secretive, maybe vet a bit, a bit more, um, the people that, that are coming in. Um, but, you know, I think that by bringing, uh, the fact that it can be done, I think it's, it's, it, it, they're, they're in not in a good position right now. Like, I think it's scared a lot of people off. Like, it, and, and I think it, it kind of shows, um, yeah, what, what, it's the power of journalism showing, shining the spotlight on something that is like, oh, okay, well, you have to, you have to, you have to own up to this now. Like, you know, do you really want to be known as the person who holds these views? And, and, and since the story actually, the 60 minute story went to air, there were a couple of members who just like recanted and said, sorry. And, um, and I think, you know, quite meaningfully. So. How interesting. And the undercover agent, he's quite safe. Yes, he is quite safe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, he's very, and he's very proud of his work, uh, as well but you know um uh he he's he, you know he's he'll he'll stay working he'll 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 keep on doing what he does i think and um uh and i think we're better off for it too amazing individual it's a i mean that's that's one of the uh, you know intriguing things about the film of course you never get to know his identity and too much about him at all but um uh he is how do you do a film out of such a person? Like he's, he's, he's central and key to the, the entire success of the operation. Um, but I think we got kind of got the balance, the balance, right? I think you do get, I don't know. I should ask you, did you get a sense of his personality or like? To some extent, yes, yes. Uh, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I like the way it, uh, it developed, uh, and so on, which I won't do any spoiler with the last, last part of it, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, really interesting and well put together. So, well done. Mm. So, uh, mm. Bethany, I'm, I'm so intrigued with, and I think I probably asked you this last time with Facing Monsters, you are so mm. diverse in terms of the uh, the projects that you take on board and, and, uh, and mm. so on. Um, I suppose you don't have a particular rule of thumb in terms of what you will accept and what you will re reject, but uh, you mm. must go through an interesting process of deciding what each project will be that you'll direct. Yeah, I think there is a rule of thumb, <laughs> and I think it's um, it, it it really it does come down to um, uh, some, something that's intriguing that I guess I, I haven't figured out myself or, um, uh, you know, there's a couple of there's a couple of categories and they don't they don't all have these boxes don't have to be ticked for each particular project. Like one would be like if I uh, if it if it's something that. I haven't done before like it really really will challenge me in in in, in some respect uh is is one thing um another another is like a big one i think this is across most of them is is what what uh, uh in in bringing this thing because they spent a lot of time and effort in, into each project like is is bringing this particular thing into the world going to um uh make the world a better place like is it is it a beautiful thing you know to come into the world is it a is it a uh, something that you know uh, is worthwhile i guess you know bringing in into the world is is another category um and team you know is very important because uh there's so much like you know the, the film goes like an hour an hour and a half bleep, you know but uh it's the process that, that that's really important you can spend year years even you know on on films and so your your, your team and the and the very process actually has to be fulfilling so i guess all of those the, the, those few things sounds um, great right. you got let me know if you've got an idea that's fine uh, absolutely <laughs> so uh I, I assume we'll be talking again in a few weeks time because i because you're working on another film are you at the moment <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, like it does make me look prolific, doesn't it? Having two things come out in the one month, but um, yeah. I'm, I'm sad, sadly, I'm not. I would like to be, but um, yeah, I, uh, I certainly do have like a couple of a couple of ideas, in, including possibly another another venture with Nick. Um, uh, but of course, you know, they they can't be discussed 
uh, for a while. Um, but yeah, like um, can't can't talk about any of them actually at this stage. But um, uh, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. And I don't think I asked you this last time, but have you seen anything else of late that has impressed you? Yeah. Okay. That's a good question. Um, that's impressed me. I needed to think about this in advance, didn't I? Um, look, I was actually just last night um, at uh, a. It, it's not film related though. <laughs> There's a launch of Eon um, uh, magazine, but it's an online. It's an online entity. E Eon A E O N. And it's this, you know, fabulous uh, site and group of people that have now actually gone in real life. They had the, the launch of this, um, you know, event that will become a regular thing in, in Melbourne and across various places in the world where they sort of uh, discuss really, really deep uh, ideas about things like the nature of consciousness and, um, you know, where dream life starts and, and, and where it ends with like incredible musicians, etc. Like, um, it's my, my, my favorite thing to get in an, an inbox is, is a, an Eon, uh, newsletter. So check it out. Um, and, um, there's now live events, but a lovely, lovely group of people. And it's just like lovely to see, it's lovely to be able to go out, you know, after all this time of, you know, two years of almost of not being able to do that and, you know, interact with some, you know, thoughtful, lovely, you know, human beings. How interesting. Sounds like mm -hmm. there might be some connections with the film that's just been released, uh, Memoria, which deals with... Uh, oh, yes, that was discussed. Uh, that was discussed last night, yes. And I unfortunately haven't seen it. Uh -huh. And I feel sure that, you know, if you were to ask me that same question after seeing it, probably by the sounds of it, it will be that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem yeah. at all. Bentley, as always, great to talk to you. Amongst us, neo-Nazis in Australia, now available on Stan. And uh, Bentley Dean, thanks again so much for talking with me. Look, thank you, Peter. Hey. Anytime. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>